everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Welcome back to Vlogmas. Today I'm going to talk about why I quit my last job. Whoa! So I wanted to make this video like kind of a while ago but with the more recent events that have occurred and just some things that have happened lately I, I felt odd about it so I waited and now I'm ready to just spill some tea. Okay, brief intermission to get the lighting corrected because where I was sitting was just not working for me. Okay, so like, subscribe, do all that good stuff. You already know what to do. I don't have to tell you. Okay, so I have kind of briefly mentioned this before, but my previous job before I decided to leave and go back to school is I was a police officer. We we all know like the negative connotation that that kind of carries right now uh yeah so let me just like kind of get on into it so i'm gonna start it kind of a little bit further back in college when i switched my major to homeland security and political science so i did that around my sophomore year and by my senior year i was like okay i'm just gonna work for the department of homeland security easy money right no not easy money so for federal jobs like FBI, Department of Homeland Security, CIA, stuff like that, you typically either need a master's degree or some sort of law enforcement experience. So I was like, okay, well, I could just be a, a cop and then work for the Department of Homeland Security. Like, that's easy. Um, I had no idea. I, I, I didn't really know cops growing up. Like, I knew nothing about it. I didn't really interact with the police ever. Uh, not that I was like a goody two-shoes or anything, I just didn't get into that kind of trouble. But I, I didn't really know what I was getting myself into. So I kind of started off like, okay, I'm just going to apply. And I applied to three different departments. And I got offers from two of them. And ultimately I picked the one that I ended up with. So with them, they offered me to start early. So basically what the stages are is you're in the academy then you're in field training and then you're on your own so they offered to give me a job just like working in logistics up until the academy started so i worked with two other people who were also in my academy we basically just bs like the entire summer and we were making like our salary so it was legit easy money so then i went through the academy and that could be a whole video in and of itself, but it was horrible to say the least. Um, it's supposed to be military boot camp style, minus the like staying there overnight. So essentially our work days were eight to 4.30, but we had to get there at 6.30 every day because there were so many people in my academy class that we had to make sure everyone was there by seven. So. Like, we were always told to get there at 6.30, most, like, not most, but there was just, like, a few stragglers who, like, never showed up until 7. Irrelevant. So, essentially, my day started at me waking up at, like, 5.30, and then I typically didn't get home until about 5.30, because although our workday ended at 4.30, uh, we also, everything, you know, in the academy is, like, doing it together. So, we had to like get all of our stuff ready and walk out the door together and typically we would never get to our cars until like five and then I had to drive home. So like I said the academy could be a video in and of itself. It's meant to be horrible. The last few weeks were a lot more fun I would say. I'll use the word fun lightly, loosely. And then I went into field training which is supposed to be hard but it's also supposed to be a little bit better than the academy you don't really have people screaming at you you don't have to do push-ups and run when something bad happens it's just you're out there in the streets learning how to do the job which isn't that what the academy is supposed to teach you the academy didn't teach me anything <laughs> but it's all a learning lesson right that that just kind of starts off there with how i feel about everything so then I do my field training and I was kind of uh, put in a negative headspace with field training because uh, throughout my training, not including rotations I did, so there, I, I had a depart, like I was in my department, but there's three different stations within the department and I had to rotate between three of them closer to the end of my training. So just in my station I had five different people who trained me, which is like not normal 
uh, like you're supposed to have one and then if that person you know is sick or calls out of work or can't come in like then you usually have another one um because there's only certain people on your shift who are f like field trained officers like they have to go to a special school to learn how to train new people so i had five in the two and a half months that i was training so it was really hard to learn kind of what everybody likes. Um, everybody wants you to write reports differently. Everybody wants you to do different paperwork for different things. Like I, the, everybody just has a different expectation because everyone does the job just a little bit differently. So having to learn how to do that five different ways was like pretty difficult. Um, I didn't enjoy that. And then also every night you get a report from the person who's training you and then every week from your supervisor uh, or essentially the shifts supervisor writes a report about you based on the reports that your trainer gives you. And my supervisor always wrote me really rude reports because she's just a really rude woman. And that's not even me being like, petty like it's just well known she's very outspoken um she's just kind of a rude lady I mean that's okay like it really worked for her in the job it worked for her um talking to people becoming a supervisor like it just worked it's definitely not my cup of tea it's not how I like to take criticism or really be spoken to but that's just kind of how she was so none of her reports for me were ever anything nice which was really frustrating because like my my main trainer guy was like we were very in sync very in tune like he never wrote anything rude about me most I would say like most of my trainers didn't write anything negative except like unless I would do something like really wrong which just like really didn't happen except for the first few weeks when I was new but she just never had anything nice to say and like I said that's not really my style that's not how I would go about writing a report for someone and it's not really how I like to see criticism but that's besides the point moving on I took my board and I passed and I became a full-on police officer cool fun I'm ready to party I thought life was gonna be good well I wanted to trade uh, there was like an A and a B platoon so basically we worked four days on four days off and so when I was working the four days the like B was off not because I was a and I wanted to switch to B um, nothing like against the shift like I liked the people I worked with it was just like personal preference that I wanted to switch to B so my supervisors even the rude one was nice enough to like help me out with that and like make it happen and like I said I, I didn't really have any issues with the shift at all like there was like one incident that really set me over the edge that like really made me want to leave and hmm, why not I'll explain the story since I have time so there was a missing kid and he was like 14 he was just like how do I explain this he was just like not a good kid like he was already doing drugs like he's already sneaking out doing drugs hanging out with the wrong people and he was like 14 like I think he was still in the eighth grade like he was obviously like he had obviously just turned 14 and he ran away and his parents like were convinced that it was like that he had mental health issues and that like he was suicidal but from what we were getting from social media like he was just hanging out with his friends and doing drugs like to say the least and it's like I, I would never want to like make parents feel like they like don't know their own kid or like make them feel bad because I'm like oh well he's not gonna hurt himself like he's just a bad kid like I, I would I like, never tried to make them feel that way but this was just what we were getting from social media but due to the fact that the parents um were saying that they thought he might hurt himself they like we had to take extra precautions and we had to do a lot of extra things and this call came out around like 5 p.m and long story short I stayed until 8 a.m. the next morning. Nobody else on my shift stayed until 8 a.m. Only me. My supervisors made me stay because it was my call. Um, and the next day, I was, the, so, okay. So I stayed until 8, I got home, marked off, showered, and then I had to go to court because in my county that I worked for, we had to go to every court case where some, uh places are different 
So then I had court and then I had to work again at 1.30. I did not sleep, not one bit, between the time I woke up the day before at probably 10 until the next day at whenever I got home from court, noon. So I called my supervisor and I was like, hi, I literally haven't slept. And she was like, okay, well, can you come in at like 5.30? And I was like, I mean, I can try, but like by the time I get home, like I haven't even eaten. Like I will let you know what I can do. So I call her again around 5.30 and I was like, I'm like, I'm not safe to work. Like it is not safe for me to work on like no sleep. I think I might have slept like an hour, maybe two, in between the time that I got home from court, like finished eating and then like tried to sleep. I, it was just like very difficult, couldn't sleep. And she was like pretty nasty about it. And then I got basically exiled from the shift for a solid few weeks because they were all like mad that I called out of work that day uh, because I guess they were just like the shift was short. I didn't know. I was like, physically ill and I was it was like very unsafe working conditions and I did not feel comfortable coming into work that day I think most people would understand that turns out I find this out a few weeks later that nobody knew that I stayed all night into the next morning nobody knew so they were all just nasty to me for no reason which you'll see this as a common theme in uh, the police department is that everyone's just freaking rude for no reason. It's a lot like high school where everyone talks really, really bad about you and they don't actually know anything. So that was that with that shift. Like I said, like other than that issue, like I really didn't have any other issues with them. I generally liked most people on that shift. But then I got moved to a shift that was like a lot different um, and it was all men, including the supervisors. So I was the, literally the only girl on the shift. And for a while between day shift, I worked evening shift, and then midnight shift, I was the only girl throughout all three shifts on, in the entire station. So, I mean, if I had to do the math, that's probably about 50 people, including supervisors, and I was the only woman. Uh, so you can imagine how that might be. So I moved to the shift, and it was fine at first. And then I progressively felt myself becoming isolated uh, like the guys, it, it was just obvious like when I would walk in a room everyone would stop talking um, It would just be like kind of silent when I was around People would make comments like oh like there's a girl in the room like you we can't talk about that it just got very uncomfortable and I just I was just like over it um, I just knew the job wasn't for me anymore uh, it wasn't even completely because of the things that I felt like with the old shift and the new shift, like I said, the old shift, like it was just that one incident and it was like close to when I was leaving anyway, so I just didn't really care. Um, but there was also just a lot of things that I didn't like about the job, like um, seeing dead people. Shh. I don't know if I should like do a trigger warning, but like if you don't know, police officers go to like DOA calls, um, suicides, stuff like that, and it's just like, um, once I saw my first dead person, like dead dead, not like funeral home, makeup on, in a suit dead, like I was just like, yeah, this, I don't think that this is for me. Cause I like full on was like, I'm gonna be like a homicide detective. No, homicide detectives are freaking weirdos. Like weird dudes. So not my thing. Um, it made me very uncomfortable, very sad. Uh, a lot of emotions came with calls like that. I just felt like I was taking a, a lot home with me and it was just very bad for my mental health. Like not only like the calls that I was going on were just like, I was taking really personally and was like just feeling them way too hard. Then it's like the people in my shift who were just like straight up horrible to me. Um, I, I like later found out that like, they never really said anything too bad about me. The only thing that they said was that I, it seemed like I didn't want to be there and that if I didn't want to be there, like why was I working there? And I was like, straight up, you're right. I didn't want to be there because you guys were nasty to me. Like, rude. <laughs> and like, I mean, they never said that I was like bad at the job or anything, which is like nice because that probably would have hurt my feelings. But it's like, I didn't find out this stuff until like two weeks before I was leaving. And then, the thing that really set me over the edge that I found out was 
that apparently there was a small group of gentlemen on the shift who okay so this actually started around like when COVID hit and um we were pretty much told like not to be proactive like not pull cars over like try like they would even have people like take calls over the phone if we if it was like not necessary for us to be there like if it wasn't a very significant call like we would take calls over the phone or like the communications people would take calls over the phone so the first few months of covid we really weren't doing anything and a lot of the guys would just like sit around at um this there's just like this one place it was like where we would get gas and they would just sit there and like hang out and i found out that they would sit there and like stalk my instagram I hope that the brief pause gave you a moment to reflect because um, they weren't stalking my Instagram to say mean things about me, to say the least. Um, the guy who told me about this, like, wouldn't really give me specifics. Like, he told me a couple of the things that they said, um, but he almost made it seem like I should be flattered that they were looking at my Instagram and thought that I was, like, attractive, and it just wasn't flattering. It felt really uncomfortable and inappropriate, considering that we all work together, and it just made me feel more and more uncomfortable. So, okay, let me just, like, <laughs> rewind, too, and say that the guys who were looking at my Instagram, all of them were either married, engaged, or had a girlfriend. Some of them had kids. Why are you looking at my Instagram if you are, have a, a woman at home, like, F off. Okay, fast forward. So I basically didn't work my last month that I was supposed to work because I used almost all of my leave time. Like I just kept calling in sick. <laughs> I mean, they told me that I could use as much time as I wanted to as I was leaving because it was my time to burn and like sick leave is something that I wasn't gonna get paid for um, when I left. So I was just calling in sick like all the time, taking off as much time as I could because I felt so uncomfortable after finding out this news and yeah that's pretty much uh, those are like pretty much all the things that sent me over the edge of just like I don't want to do this and like I said like I would say like the first thing that really was like I don't think this job is for me was like my first death that I went to because it was just like really bad not like not something I'm gonna get into it's like not my story to tell but it was just like really bad and really stuck with me for a very 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 long time uh, even now it still kind of sticks with me and it was like something that I never wanted to have to go to again or see again and I just knew being in this job like it was probably something that I was gonna have to deal with more and more so that was like the first thing that made me think like I don't think this job is for me but it was so early on in my like career that I didn't want to write it off of me like quitting the job and there was a lot of like other pressures like my mom would always say how proud she was of me and I didn't want to disappoint her I didn't want to feel like I had wasted so many years like I mean I was I did it for two and a half years um those two and a half years including the academy so I just didn't want to almost disappoint myself in thinking that I either couldn't do the job or just like it wasn't for me or felt like I was wasting my time but at the end of the day I feel like I really grew a lot I feel like I just learned a lot about myself I learned about what I like I learned how to talk to people um, a, a lot of what I heard was that I was really patient with people in that I was always really nice to people no matter how rude they were to me which is something that I kind of take pride in because I watched a lot of people go from zero to 100 like people as in officers because they just didn't have any sort of patience and I just want to address like I know the severity of what is going on in the world with like police brutality issues I just want to say that I never personally saw any like severe police brutality issues like I said the only thing that I saw was like a very severe lack of patience like I never heard of or saw any sort of like racism or um abuse of power which and I would say that's just because the 
the police department I worked up or worked for was very very hard on officers like was not afraid to fire anybody for anything because the thing is is like we always have our cameras on or always well I feel like I still talk in the sense that I still work there I do not <laughs> but they were very hard on officers like cameras were always on and they were always reviewing the body cam footage so if there was ever anything that seemed off or odd like they were addressing it and people were getting fired um there was like an incident that it wasn't something that i did but it was someone someone else did and i got called in to like almost testify for it and that person got fired and that's t like i i just told the truth like it wasn't I don't want to call it like a police brutality issue I just want to I just don't think this guy was meant to be a police officer and I think that he should never have been a police officer he was just not a very good person but yeah I don't I don't want to say this in regards of like all police are bad because I definitely don't think that's true I hope I've covered everything that I had an issue with of why I left that job um, essentially I would say like at the end of the day my all-encompassing reason of why I left was that it was just not meant for me and I felt uncomfortable every single day that I worked like I addressed this in another video but there were days like before I decided to go back to school that I could barely get out of bed because I was so anxious and so scared to go into work every day because I felt like someone was going to say something to me, someone was going to be rude to me, like a supervisor was going to call me into their office, I was going to get written up for something, like, uh, I'll just like mention this too. My second shift that I worked on, there was like so many times that like my supervisors would call me into their office to like tell me stuff about like how they felt like I was doing or what other people were saying about me and I was just like, if I'm not in trouble, why am I here? Like, why are we having these secret meetings? Like, why are you making me feel like I did something wrong or making me feel uncomfortable? It was just like, I just felt like they never called me in to say anything nice. I felt like they were always calling me in to almost scare me. But I also never did anything wrong. Like, I wasn't doing anything, but they would, all, they would be like, oh, you know, like, so-and-so feels like maybe you're afraid to go on big calls. Like, do you know why they would say that? No, they're a bunch of ass hats. That's why. I hate to cuss, but I think ass hat is the only way to describe the people that I worked with, at least on the second shift. That is, they literally just talked bad about people to talk bad about people. They talked about everybody. If, um, if it was John, Joe, and little Timmy, and little Timmy wasn't there, John and Joe would be talking about little Timmy. If Joe wasn't there, John and little Timmy would be talking about Joe. Like, everybody talked about everybody. Because that's, for whatever reason, that was the cool thing to do. <sighs> okay, now I feel like I've gotten everything off my chest. And those are the reasons why I left my job as a police officer. Because it, it was horrible. At least for me. I know plenty of people who still love the job. Like, I still have friends there that... Love the job, love what they do, never gonna quit. And that's totally cool, that's great. It just wasn't for me. And I think I knew that from the moment that I started and I just tried to convince myself otherwise. So if you hate your job or you're uncomfortable or people are making you feel uncomfortable, one, don't be like me and go to HR before you leave and uh, maybe try and get some people fired for uh, sexual harassment, I don't know. Anyway, um, on all seriousness, if there's like an issue with your job, talk to your supervisor, talk to HR, leave. Find something else. Like I've been researching going back to school for months and I felt like I took all the right steps and I knew that's what I wanted to do and so I did it. And it was the best decision I ever made. So I'm very happy now. Look at me, I'm glowing. Yay. Okay, <laughs> that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.